Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the more survivalists. In this case, we're going to be talking about EDC gear, the kind of thing you have with you in your pockets, maybe a bag as well. Uh, this is mostly um, a setup that has worked well for me over the years and if I don't feel like uh, I have a need to upgrade or change anything, I'm not worried about letting it, leaving it as it is. At the same time, if there's something better that comes along or something I feel it's worth uh, upgrading to, like in the case of maybe a, a better flashlight or a newer one, better technology, uh, a better cell phone, something, a nicer knife or whatever, yeah, sure, but the system pretty much stays the same with little tweaks here and there, depending on what I feel is working best. Um, also, I'd like to say, many times you see these YouTube videos of people showing their EDC and you know they're not carrying that with them all day long. You see it because the gear is simply not worn or used nearly as much as, as it would if, if it has been carried. And then the amount of stuff, you really wonder if a person goes around with 20 pounds of gear all day long everywhere he goes, really? You know, we have to keep it real. If whatever it is that I'm being mentioning here just does not work for you, then you kind of tweak and adjust for your lifestyle, for your uh, specific situation. Maybe a, a larger multi-tool or a larger knife because you are uh, a guy wearing a suit all day long in an office environment and you cannot have this, or you have restrictions because of where you are employed. Maybe you're a you know a hundred pound uh, yoga instructor that works uh, yoga pants all day long and you cannot have a, um, a, a, a big lerman with you. Well, maybe you do something else, but the kind of thing we want to do here is learn the essential tools that we want to have and find a solution to us to have that with us. This is all going to be straight out of Street Survival Skills, my latest book. So going through the list, basically, we start with a cell phone and wallet, stuff that every normal person has with them. I, I say a couple things uh, regarding these two. In terms of wallet, make sure you have a good bit of cash. Cash is probably one of the most useful tools people end up finding out. They just come across something that they need a little bit more money, uh, 50, 100 bucks. That's usually a good number to go by in case of little emergencies where, oh man, those 50 bucks really save the day for me. If they're not taking a, a credit cards, what, especially the acceptance of credit cards, many times during emergencies, if the system is down, uh, there's no, no power, whatever, you can pay with cash, that gives you uh, a big advantage. And also, many times you just need the cash, the money right there, for whatever reason, it just saves a day. Then in terms of the cell phone, you don't have to buy the latest, newest cell phone, the newest iPhone, all day long every year but you want to have something that is capable of doing the task that you need most cell phones today most smartphones will do most of the things you need the couple things i i um I uh, mentioned uh, in regards to cell phones is make sure that it's waterproof. If it's dust proof, even better. Uh, bump proof and, and shock proof, not so much. It's a little bit less common, but you can upgrade that with a good case. It doesn't have to be a huge one. I found that Spigen armor works very well. That's what I've been using for years without any problem. And put a good screen protector in there as well. One last thing, I like to have a cell phone that has an incorporated FM radio. Um, not all phones have that. Usually they use your data so as to use internet through the internet. But if it has a, a true FM radio incorporated, it's a big advantage because it allows you to gather information when everything else has gone down. When there's nothing else working, FM radio will be the last thing to go. Um, caution regarding that, most uh, cell phones that do that use the, uh, um, the headphones as an antenna. So you're going to be needing those so as to use it in that, in that way. Uh, a firearm. Wherever it's legal, do get yourself a, a gun. Uh, specifically, spe especially in the United States, where it's really not all that hard to get a, a concealed carry license, go through those loops, get yourself your carry gun, learn how to use it. That puts you in a different perspective and entirely on a different level in terms of how well prepared you are. Having a firearm with you at all times should be one of your priorities where and when legal for you to do so. If not, that's okay. Just work with whatever you can. If you cannot have a firearm, maybe you can have some pepper spray. That's a lot better than nothing. Uh, a knife, again, the legal restrictions will vary depending on, on where you live, even the cities or even the work environment you are in. But you always try to have the best possible means of defense that you can uh, procure. Moving on, uh, having a um, 
is sunglasses. That's a big one. I see people that don't think a whole lot about it, but yeah, sure, sunglasses, useful. I use mine all the time, but why go with just normal sunglasses? I go with Wiley X, which are also a, a ballistic. They stop a, a certain amount of, of yeah, a certain type of projectile from hitting and going through it. There's guys out there that have been in in, in Middle East and are um, had their, their eyesight saved because of this kind of protective gear. So incorporate that to your normal sunglasses. This is protecting me from you know from the sun, protecting me from wind. These are also these are uh, Wiley X Valor. These are polarized and they reduce the glare nicely and they fit well close to your face. And you know very much in, in current times, any uh, virus, anything, this is going to be. It's not as good as a proper. Um, uh, protection equipment, uh, but it is very close to your face and it's going to be reducing the chances of something getting through and, and getting into your eyes. Even if it's just a, a little you know, rock or something, some, um, some fragment, it's protecting your eyes much better than just regular normal uh, sunglasses. Multi-tool, for me this is essential. A multi-tool, besides the other normal stuff, the multi-tool is, is this thing I find that most people, people don't use and for me it's been over, you know, it's been many years, almost two decades that I, I've appreciated and learned to um, I have one of these with me at all time. This one specifically, it's been with me for almost two decades. The Lerman Charge, for a lot of people, is too big. For me, it's just perfect. Um, take this away from me, you're taking like my arm. It is that important. It, in that same line, uh, besides having a, a good multi-tool, having a flashlight. This is another important one as well. These two would be, um, I wouldn't consider a person to be much of a prepper or a survivalist if they don't have at least a, a couple of these. Uh, or variations according to their limitations if it has to be something smaller but having a multi-tool of some kind and having a flashlight of some kind some people think that their cell phone is a flashlight no it's not it's just a flash that you may use with an app as a, as a flashlight but this guys is an actual flashlight not a little cell phone and it has to do certain things it has to provide you with a lot of, of lumens if you need those if you need 300 200 lumens with current technology it's more than doable if you have to use uh, five lumens that that's great as well because this last for an entire week if you're careful in its use or it, you know the moonlight mode I think goes for an entire week on that is fantastic that's a great advantage in an emergency and in my case I combine that with a whistle whistling is always using a whistle not, not, not whistling but blowing a whistle is a lot more efficient it's a typical uh, emergency equipment if there's been an accident if you're immobilized if you're trapped somewhere using a whistle is a lot more effective and you can combine that with light signals you know you're signaling someone with your flashlight and you're blowing the whistle and both of these are combined in the same unit uh, moving on, talked about the flashlight. We are going to be talking about the folding knife. A knife is an essential survival tool. Uh, any good knife will do. You know, uh, try to get something uh, solid, reliable, a good quality folding knife. Um, they're not awfully expensive. You have all price ranges. For me, the one I'm using lately is this one, the Zero Tolerance 0630. It's a uh, uh, an Emerson design. It has the wave feature which allows you to deploy it as soon as you bring it out of, of the pocket. It has titanium, a uh, frame lock and 06, man I'm not remembering the seal right now, uh, uh, 535 uh, S35VN which is good stuff, good steel and yeah just have a knife. And again regarding your local laws follow those, keep those in mind of course. What else? Pepper spray. We talked about this. This is good stuff. If you cannot have a, a firearm, pepper spray is pretty damn close in terms of stopping someone that it's, uh, it's fixed in attacking you. Yes, it's not a firearm in terms of um, some of them uh, against an armed attacker, but someone that wants to just uh, you cause bodily harm using, you know, beat you up, use a, a blunt weapon or even a knife. Uh, a, a, a kind of maze of pepper spray is very effective. A lot more than than most people think. Thank you.
and then your keys anyone you know you're going to be having your house keys you're going to be having your car keys use these so as to have a second line of gear in my case i have a, a mini a lighter a mini flashlight using a triple a battery there's a titanium as well a small pico pry bar and a little a tool a little multi-tool this is a lerman mini champ which is very convenient it has a bunch of tools that i found over the years to be very handy in a number of cases even if this is all you have, at least you have a flashlight, at least you have a little knife with a bunch of tools in there that is going to be coming very useful if you happen to need these. Same goes for the car keys. In this case, I have a, a, a third flashlight, which I added after realizing that many times I had this in my hand and I was missing a flashlight, even though I had one in my pocket. I just wanted one there as well. So I use a Claris Mini 1T and a minimized version of the Mini Champ, which is the Victorinox Manager. Just the essential tools of the, of the Mini Champ here, plus a pen, which I find to be very useful. Now, this is basically the, like your pocket gear yeah sure not this I've never carried this in my pocket I have carried smaller versions of this in my pocket this would go well with your bag if you have your everyday carry bag and you don't have a firearm make sure you have a good solid size can of pepper spray in there and the things you you should be considering carrying in your in your EDC bag are again stuff that I've mentioned uh, many times before and I'm not making any of this up if you're gonna be carrying um, a backpack a shoulder bag whatever there's a few things you might want to add to it uh, an EDC bag lets you carry uh, more gear and a small first aid kit a bottle of water a respirator an energy bar are worthy additions right that's literally what I said and that's in fact some of the stuff that you have here, no, or that I have here. This is, uh, if it looks familiar, yes, this is from the Indiana Jones movie. The one that Indiana Jones used was an MK7, which is this same uh, bag. This is from a respirator uh, from 1942, model MK7. The nice thing about these is that they have like compartments and that allows you to organize your gear a little bit better. So I have a water, a bottle of water. This is important, guys. If you're gonna be having an EDC bag and you don't have water, then you just don't understand your priorities. Water is a priority. In my case, I go with uh, uh, a stainless steel bottle, which is more rugged. You don't have the crappy plastic particles or the, the way a plastic bottle wears, not such nice and you can use this for boiling water or even cooking um, water is a priority another priority is air so a collapsible respirator like this one this is a, an FFP3 which would be similar to an N99 I believe or a, or close to that this is a, a nice collapsible respirator especially these days yeah um, but it's not about just what's happening right now this is stuff that as I as you I just just uh, showed you this is stuff that I described in my book this is basically basic preparedness stuff. It could be collapsed structures, it could be smoke, it could be volcanic ash, it could be a number of factors that compromise air and you want to protect yourself from that and this is essential equipment for it. Just, you know, um, mint the headphones so as to listen to music or whatever you listen to but also has to use as an antenna in your FM radio in your phone. A battery, so as to charge your phone, that's pretty critical, that's pretty important. Today, your cell phone is, is critical survival equipment. It's a computer that allows you to access the entire planet. It's not just you know some fashion statement. So your cell phone, rugged with a battery, more power, and the cable so as to recharge and use it. Uh, a notebook, that's always a, a nice addition. A notebook and a pen, and this in my case now it's a, it's a pencil. Take notes, write stuff down, important information, but also stuff that's in your head and you just don't wanna, don't wanna miss. Uh, water purification tablets, there's no reason not to add uh, a few of these, they're just weight nothing, couldn't be more compact, so have one of those as well in there. Uh, an energy bar. Food is not nearly as much of a priority as people think. Water is. 
during a real emergency, you're going to be missing water if you don't have it. You're going to be needing water, water to wash your, your hands, your face if something goes wrong. Uh, food, you can do without food for a couple days, but a, a small energy bar is no big deal, takes no space and may get, give you something to eat if you, if you happen to need it. Hand sanitizer, of course, this is important to use as well, keeping your hands clean. Some paracord, sure, no big deal. It is compact enough, light enough, and has a bunch of uses, so you want to add some of that. And in the outer layer, I have some of the protective equipment in terms of a small first aid kit, which I'll do a separate video covering different kits, and some hemostatic uh, gauze, uh, some sea locks to stop bleeding, and a tourniquet. These three allow you to deal with some of those emergencies that may be a little bit more of a little boo-boo thing, sure, but some of the heavier stuff, stopping bleedings, someone got shot, someone got in a car accident, someone got blown up in a terrorist attack, you have ways of stopping that, right? Saving your own life or lives of people around you, that's a, a pretty important thing. And little else, just some Kleenex, and that's it. As you see, it's not a, a massive bag. This is something that you can have with you all day long and even have a little bit of, of spare room in there, especially if you go with a larger bag. The empty space is also important many times over uh, underestimated, but it's quite handy to have more space in your bag to carry whatever it is you need to carry. But guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the little video. Keep in mind street survival skills, which is available there in the link below in Amazon. See you on our next video. Have an awesome day.